Today we're meeting with Kenny Song, who's created a really fascinating library that shows how he can trick some machine learning models by carefully crafting the data you present to them as inputs. But before we dive into that, Kenny, tell us more about your background. Sure. Hi, Jason. My name is Kenny. I'm a graduate student at the University of Tokyo uh, doing research on the security and reliability of machine learning systems. Uh, before that, I worked at Google in California for about three years, and before I was at Google, um, I did my undergrad in computer science, where I did some research on reinforcement learning. Awesome. So I saw some of your work on how you can essentially attack ML models with very carefully chosen input data. So I guess theoretically, you know, you could take an image of, say, a cat, change some of the pixels on that image, and then the model will predict it sees a dog, even though as humans, it still looks like a cat. So I guess my question here is, what magic is this? Is this some sort of reverse engineering for some known model? Or how does this work in simple terms? Sure. So these types of attacks are called adversarial inputs. And basically, you very carefully uh, add some noise to a regular image. You feed it through a neural network, and then you can make the neural network predict uh, that the image is anything that you want it to predict. Um, and so this is a very interesting attack. It's been known since about 2016. Um, and uh, what I did recently was create a JavaScript demo of this so that you can try out these different attacks in your browser and very visually uh, see how to break neural networks. That's really cool. Uh, very interesting topic as well. And um, I guess maybe we can see a demo of this in action to see how that works. Sure, absolutely. So let me go to the adversarial JS homepage. All right, so uh, this is the live demo of these attacks running in your browser. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to the MNIST data set first. So you'll see here that uh, there's different types of images in MNIST. These are just the numbers uh, 0 through 9. So let me run one of these images through a pre-trained neural network. Sure. Here, you'll see that uh, this model is very correctly trained. Um, it predicts that this number is a 5 with high probability. Um, now, if we try to generate an adversarial example, uh, you'll see that there's uh, many different types of attacks. And these attacks sort of were developed over the course of a few years. So uh, basically, these are in order from strongest to weakest. Um, this first attack is uh, one of the strongest attacks that we know currently. And mm -hmm. strength is measured by uh, how little we need to change the image uh, to get the desired probability. I see, yeah. So, uh, if we run this, you'll see that the resulting image is very, very close to the original, right? Yeah. And if you actually predict it, uh, it uh, switches the prediction to three. Mm -hmm. Now, there are different types of attacks uh, that have different properties. So let's look at the uh, JSMA attack. So when I run this, what you'll see is that you can actually see a few pixels mm. uh, being completely changed. and that's because for this type of uh, for this type of attack, we basically allow the neural network to change uh, as few pixels as possible as much as possible. I see. And so yeah. you get these different types of artifacts. And uh, the last attack I'll show you is called the basic iterative method. This is again a different type of attack. And what you'll see is that there's this sort of almost uniform noise applied to the image, and mm -hmm. that's because uh, for this attack you're basically allowed to change uh, every pixel of the image uh, up to a certain small amount. And I you'll see that this attack is also successful. So depending on what your end goals are, if you want to kind of uh, only changing a few pixels or change lots of them, but very subtly, yeah, then you can, you can choose the method that's most appropriate, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Depending on the type of noise you want to apply, you can choose different sure. attacks. Awesome. Uh, maybe we can see another demo of this in action, maybe on a different type of model. Sure. So why don't we try ImageNet? So MNIST is a, is a very, very simple example, uh, but this works for all types of Im image models and other types of models as well. So uh, the example I always like to go with is the dog. Mm -hmm. So we can run the neural network on this dog. Um, this will take a few seconds because it's actually downloading the ImageNet model, which is a, sure. a few megabytes. Yeah. Uh, but once it's downloaded, it'll make the correct prediction that this is an English Springer dog with probability 89%. And then we can uh, turn this dog into a hot dog in the <laughs> eyes of the neural network. So now we'll choose a different attack algorithm this time. Uh, click Generate. Uh, so it's a little bit slow because it's actually doing all of this computation in real time. Sure. And 
uh, once the image is generated, you'll see that it looks very, very similar. If you look a little closely, you can see that there's a little bit of sort of static in the image. Mm -hmm. um, and now if you run through this noised image, put it through the neural network, you'll see that it's actually classified as a hot dog <laughs> with 99% probability. That's amazing. Uh, very interesting piece of research. And just to clarify here, again, this is all happening in real time. So you didn't necessarily, you know, train it to work specifically for that model. It's kind of trying out different pixel values to see how it edges it towards the direction that we want, i.e. hot dog in this case. And then it finally yeah. finds a combination of pixels or the right noise that does that essentially, right? So this could work on yeah. pretty much any model we throw at it. We could try and break any model using this kind of technique essentially. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's so all the attack algorithms are, are implemented in JavaScript yeah. and they're running basic gradient descent in your browser. Awesome. Um, so I've got to ask at this point, you know, what made you come up with this idea and uh, try this out using TensorFlow.js? And maybe how did TensorFlow.js help you bring this to life in the browser itself? Sure. So um, I think adversarial examples are a pretty hot topic in the ML research community, um, but it's not very widely known outside of that. And one of the reasons is that um, uh, there are these like really famous research papers with these diagrams of like turning uh, pandas into monkeys. Um, but all of this knowledge is like, locked inside of research papers, right? It's not really accessible to a lot of the general public. And so um, I thought this was a topic that was really cool and it would uh, be pretty fun to try to implement it myself. And I thought, uh, why not try doing this in, in JavaScript so that people can actually run it in your browser? And as far as I know, this is the like first truly interactive demo where you can just like go to a web page. You don't need to install anything or set up anything. You just click a few buttons and you can play around with these images. And TensorFlow.js, yeah, TensorFlow.js was really critical in making this happen because um, it's pretty much the, the de facto way of doing machine learning in the browser. And so uh, the library was uh, a huge help. You didn't have to start everything from scratch. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the first example I've seen of this working live in the web browser. And as you said, it's really great to kind of get this out there to the public so they understand like how these things are actually working behind the scenes and that they can be fooled. Uh, unlike the human brain, we still see it as a dog. We're not fooled by this, but the machine learning is just a bunch of mathematics working out and it can be tricked. So this is really cool research to kind of get to the wider audience as well. So they appreciate what's going on behind the scenes too. Um, awesome stuff. So the other thing I want to ask here is how do you see this sort of research helping to create better, maybe even more robust models in the future? Yeah, so I think this research is, is really, really critical as our society gets more and more automated. Um, when uh, we have self-driving cars on the road, you have fraud detection powered by machine learning, you have healthcare uh, decisions uh, made by these models, how can you trust that the model's prediction is correct, right? Yes. And so these adversarial examples is one really striking example of how these models can be completely, completely wrong um, based on information that humans don't even perceive, right? And so sure. uh, driving forward research in this area to create more robust models is really critical. And I see these kinds of uh, open source libraries as a way to both inspire new researchers to come into the field and also allow existing researchers to have this uh, standardized benchmark of attacks that they can run against new defense algorithms. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And just to add to that, I guess, even though these attacks are very specific and trying to break these things, I guess mm -hmm. just with the random noise of a webcam, you might end up making the image classified in such a way that it gets mis misclassified, which for a self-driving car could you know, have serious consequences. So uh, it's good that this research is being done so we can look into that further. And of course, this is a live demo in the browser. So I'm sure some of the people watching right now would love to go and have a play with this themselves. Uh, where can they go to try it out and learn more? Yeah, definitely. So I think you can just Google adversarial JS and it should be in the first page of Google results. Um, there's a live demo on, on GitHub, so you can just play with it in your browser. Um, I would highly encourage everyone to try out the different data sets. Uh, there's one for traffic signs, there's also CFAR 10, and there's a lot of different attack algorithms as well uh, that you can play around with. Awesome. And we'll definitely put the links in the description after the show as well, so look out for those. Um, so thank you very much, Kenny, for being on the show. It's great talking today and look forward to seeing how this library evolves in the future. Sure. Thanks for having me, Jason.